Okay, so in this video lecture, we're going to talk uh, in more detail about the shape of the PPF. Um, specifically, why is it that uh, when we look at a PPF, we see that it's curved rather than a straight line or some other shape. So in the lesson, in lesson three, um, I've posted uh, just a, a simple, simple graph, an example. So if you want to go ahead and open that up, um, I'm going to walk through this example to kind of explain why we see this curved shape. So in this, in this example, um, we've got a capital good and a consumer good. And so we're going to look at widgets, which we'll consider those a capital good. Maybe it's a part of a machine you know, used to produce other things. And then we're also going to look at apples, which are a consumer good. And so in the graph, um, I've got the PPF laid out, and then I've got all these different combinations uh, noted from A th uh, combination A through combination J. So let's imagine that we start out at combination A. So this means we are using all of our resources, all of our technology to produce nothing but widgets. So we're not producing any apples. Now if we decide that we want to produce some apples, as we noted in class, um, it's going to require that we produce fewer widgets so that we can free up some of those resources and then reallocate those resources, some of that land, labor, and capital to the production of apples. And so we'd move from point A to point B. And if we want to produce even more apples, right, again, it would require another sacrifice. We'd have to reduce the amount of widgets we produce. That would free up some resources. And then we'd reallocate those resources to apples, and then we'd go from combination B to combination C. So at each of these combinations, from A, B, C, all the way down to J, uh, they represent different combinations of widgets and apples, and they all represent combinations where we are achieving full employment, where we're using all available resources. Now, what we want to do is think about what kinds of resources we would use to make widgets, and what kinds of resources we would need to make apples. So if we think about widgets, so let's just imagine that a widget is just a piece of a machine, right? It's going to go into another piece of machinery. Um, and so in terms of land, uh, well, we're certainly going to need, you know, some land to put a widget factory on. So we'll need some, you know, some open space. Uh, we'll build the building on it. And then as far as natural resources, let's just say that the widgets are made out of steel so, or, or aluminum or some other type of metal. So we're going to need some space to put a building on and some raw materials, some raw metals. Uh, as far as labor, what kind of labor are we going to need to run our widget factory? Well, at the very least, we're going to need people that know how to make widgets, right? So this may be um, mechanical engineers, or it may be assembly line workers, other machine operators. Um, so they're going to be the ones actually making the widget. Uh, but we're also going to need people to, you know, make sure supplies are getting moved around, to make sure that stuff gets cleaned up at the end of the day. Um, we're also going to need people to, you know, oversee the factory. So we're going to need managers and supervisors. Uh, maybe we need a supply chain manager. Maybe we need accountants or HR people. Um, so we need a lot of different kinds of labor to run this widget factory. And then in terms of capital um, that we need to make widgets, well obviously we're going to need maybe some assembly line equipment, some other machines, maybe some metal presses, um, maybe just other generic tools to you know tinker with the machinery. Um, we'll need office equipment, um, you know just other things you might find in, in a business, in a, in a factory. So we've got various forms of land or natural resources, different types of labor, and then various types of capital that we would need to produce a widget. Now let's turn to apple production. So let's imagine that we're producing apples like on a great big apple farm. Um, of course, we're going to need some land, um, but in this case we're going to need farmland, so we're going to need land that is um, suitable for farming. Uh, and then natural resources, well we're going to need some apple seeds, obviously, or some apple trees ready to go. Uh, we'll need water, maybe some type of fertilizer, of course sunshine. So we've got um, different land and natural resources we need. As far as labor, uh, well obviously we're going to need some people that know something about farming. So we're going to need some you know, pretty, uh, pretty experienced farmers uh, to kind of oversee the actual farming, but then also maybe some you know, other just general workers that can you know, run a tractor or pick apples or something like that. Um, but also, if this is a pretty big operation, again, just like in the widget factory, we're going to need some managers and supervisors and someone to make sure supplies are getting in. And um, maybe, maybe we need drivers to deliver the apples. Just, and just, you know, the widget factory, maybe they need uh, delivery drivers as well. Um, so we, again, we need different types of labor. And then finally, in terms of capital, um, to, to, to grow apples, well, obviously we're going to need some farm equipment, some tractors, you know, shovels, irrigators, 
um, but also maybe just other general tools to work on the tractor or maybe we've got a little farm office so we'll need some office equipment for the managers and things like that. So we've got widgets that need various combinations of land, labor, and capital and we also have apples that need uh, various combinations of land, labor, and capital. And so what we've got, um, again, with our PPF, we're, we're denoting all of these different combinations of widgets and apples, of capital and consumer goods, and we know that every time we move from one combination to another, we're going to have to move resources from, you know, one location to another, all right? Now, if we look back at the graph, let's again start at combination A, right? We're using all available resources to produce nothing but widgets. That means you've got all the machine operators, all the managers, all the supervisors, all the, all the delivery drivers, but also anyone, all, all the farmers. So we've got Old McDonald in there trying to make widgets. Okay? Now it turns out that someone like Old McDonald probably isn't going to know very much about making widgets. He doesn't have a mechanical engineering degree or a material science degree. He doesn't know anything about you know, you operating a metal press or anything like that. So it turns out he's not really going to be helping us make that many widgets. So if we want to go from combination A to combination B, it would probably make sense to move resources, particularly labor like far, uh, Old McDonald, who, you know, he's only good at, at farming. He doesn't know anything about making widgets. What if we took him out of the widget factory and sent him out to the apple farm? Well, what that's going to mean is that to go from combination A to combination B, we're going to make fewer widgets, right, because we're going to be taking some land, labor, and capital away from widgets and sending in, it, that over to make um, apples instead. Um, so we're going to lose some widgets, but we're going to gain actually a whole lot more apples, right? So going from A to B, you see a small decrease, a small movement down the widget axis, but a relatively large increase or movement to the right along the apple axis, right? So we give up relatively small amount of widgets and we gain a relatively large amount of apples. Now, if we continue in this fashion, going from combination B to C and C to D, again, what, we're, what this is going to require is that we'll have to reallocate resources. So we'll have to give up, sacrifice some widgets, shift resources over, and we'll be able to produce more apples. But what we're going to see as we move further and further down along that PPF from combination A through B, C, D, all the way down to J, is that every time we move from one combination to the next, the amount of widgets that we're going to be giving up is actually going to be growing. So as we go from A to B, we give up just a few widgets. As we go from combination B to combination C, we give up a little bit more in widgets, right? Not, you know, a little bit more than, you know, when we went from A to B. And as we go from C to D, D to D, and all the way down, we get down to, you know, H, I, and J, and we see that as we move from H to I and I to J, that the amount of widgets that we're going to be losing is actually going to be relatively large, and the gain in apples is now going to be relatively small. So what's happening down here is that when we're moving from you know, combinations H to I to J, we're again having to take resources away from the widget factory and we're sending them to the apple farm. Well, if you think about it, you know, who's the last person that you want in the widget factory? It's probably the person that invented the widget or designed the machinery to make the widget, right? Um, they're only good at making widgets. They don't know a thing about farming apples. And so if you take them out of the widget factory and you move them over to the apple farm, you're going to lose all of your remaining widgets, and that, uh, that widget maker is not really going to help you make any more apples. So what we see at the two ends of the PPF, um, you know, in, in, in the area around like combinations A and B and C and combinations H, I, and J, what's happening is as we move back and forth between those particular points, what we're going to be doing is dipping into very specialized resources. So when we go from A to B, you know, we take far old McDonald, who only knows how to farm, um, out of the widget factory. We lose a few widgets, but then he's really good at making apples. Or if we go from combination J back the other way to combination I, and that's from I to H and H to G, right? Well, if you're going to take resources away from the apple farm, why don't you take the people that are really good at making uh, widgets? Take them off the apple farm and send them over to the widget factory. So you'll lose just a few apples, but you may gain a whole lot more widgets. And so what we see happening here is that as we move further and further in one direction or the other, the amount that we're sacrificing is going to be getting larger and larger. And so remember that another way to think about a sacrifice is an opportunity cost, right? An opportunity cost represents a trade-off, uh, represents the next best thing. It's what you give up in order to get more of something else. So in this case, as we go from combination A to B to C and on down, 
the amount of widgets we sacrifice, the opportunity cost in terms of um, widgets is going to be greater and greater and greater and greater. And then the added benefit in terms of more apples or more whatever we're making instead is going to get smaller and smaller. And so what we observe happening is that in reality, uh, we have what we call increasing opportunity costs. Right? You have to keep up giving up more and more widgets to get more and more apples. Why do we have increasing opportunity costs? Why isn't it always just a constant trade-off? Why isn't the slope of the PPF just a straight line? Well, again, it's because some of those resources that we're going to be moving back and forth are very specialized. Right? Now, some resources are um, not specialized. So, for example, the delivery driver, right? Um, the person that drives the truck to deliver widgets is probably just as capable of driving a truck that delivers apples. Um, maybe we have very low-skilled workers that, you know, just kind of tinker on the assembly line, or maybe we have some low-skilled workers that could just as easily, you know, pick apples. We move them back and forth, and, you know, the trade-off in terms of one good or the other is relatively constant as we move those workers back and forth. So when we have resources that are not specialized, that means that we can easily substitute them back and forth between uh, different areas of production. And every time we move one more unit, one more low-skilled worker, one more, you know, just regular old wrench or some other basic tool, um, the trade-off is going to be relatively constant. But then when we start dipping into highly specialized resources, we're not going to get the, the same constant trade-off because some of those resources are not perfect substitutes for one another. So a delivery driver, right, a, a widget delivery driver is a perfect substitute for an Apple dri uh, delivery driver. And an Apple delivery driver is a perfect substitute for a widget delivery driver. Um, there's really not much difference in the skill. It's just what's, what's in the back of the truck. But when we look at someone like the machine uh, designer or the, the, the machinist, the person that's the expert at operating the machinery, and we compare them to Old McDonald, right, they are not perfect substitutes for one another. Right? You cannot take farmer Old McDonald off of the farm, replace him with um, a, a machinist, and expect to get the same results. You can't take the machinist out of the widget factory and replace them with Old McDonald and expect to get the same results. So this idea that some resources are not perfect substitutes because they're specialized is what leads to this um, observed increase in the opportunity cost, and it's this increase, uh, these increasing opportunity costs that give this PPF its curved shape. Um, if you were to look at a PPF, um, so maybe instead of widgets, we were looking at pears and apples, right? Well, the resources that you use to make pears are probably identical to the resources that you use to make apples. And so all of their resources are going to be perfect substitutes for one another. They may all be specialized at farming, but a far old McDonald is just, is just as good at making apples as he is at making pears, and uh, just as good at making pears as he is at making apples. So if we were looking at two goods where all of the resources were perfect substitutes, we would get a PPF that was a straight line because that opportunity cost, that trade-off, would be constant. It would always, it'd always be, it'd always be um, experiencing the same ratio of uh, sacrifice and gain. But in reality, uh, we're not going to be looking at goods um, for an entire society uh, where the resources are perfect substitutes. And so again, we get this increasing opportunity cost and this curved PPF.